Jamie Price is an artist who's not afraid to push the boundaries in his work. I recently caught up with him at his studio in Annadale. Music has always been like a deep part of who I am. When I left school, I actually wanted to be a musician. The two cultures of music and art are not that different. You're an artist, you sit in the studio painting pictures, paint this show or whatever you're doing, and then you have an exhibition and people come up and very nicely say like, hey, good job on that exhibition. Imagine if you're a musician and you do like two strokes and you turn around to the crowd and they're like, wow, like it's, it's just, it's just a surreal world. I create all those still lives and you can see there's all this stuff here like, you know, there's a taxidermy pheasant just there. Like, it's, it's, and I had to go out and find a taxidermy pheasant because I wanted that in this painting. Or, so I create these scenes quite intentionally and I have them set up in the studio and I do take a lot of reference photos of them and then I kind of compile them all together and paint from those. For example, the last show um, you know, there was this uh, lamb, I think it was like a lamb deer thing, um, and it was a little porcelain sculpture with these beautiful gold gilded horns, and it was this piece that was crafted with so much workmanship, made out of porcelain and gilded with gold, it was beautiful, and I tied this smiley face helium balloon to it, which is just this throwaway object that we have, but the two things together being gold, there's like a visual connection between those things and I find I found it a little bit funny that, you know, we can so admire this beautiful sculpture, but at the same time this balloon, although aesthetically similar, is just this throwaway object. Have I told you about my four pillars? Be driven to do which you cannot will. Talent is cheap. Be a nice person and nice people will surround you. Be in the right place at the right time. When you're doing someone's portrait, it takes a while. So it's important to like the person, find them interesting. I had listened to his podcast on uh, conversations on ABC and I thought this guy sounds really interesting and cool and I thought, well, I should read his book. So I started reading his book and then I noticed that Monster Children, who I was doing some writing for at the time, had uh, done an interview with him and I just asked uh, the editor of Monster Children if I could have his number and she gave it to me and I called him and said, hey, I want to do this painting of you. And he was really into it. I caught him in Brisbane and we basically just hung out for a couple days and we went through his entire amazing stack of memorabilia and all the things that he had collected over the years, all these amazing bits of music history. To me, his tattoos and his, you know, old kind of like very worn look of him was so much more interesting with no shirt. You have this idea and in my mind when I had the idea for the hand show I know that hands are hard to paint and it was kind of pulling at me for a long time going you should do this show where it's all hands and I'm sitting there going no brain I don't want to do a show that's all hands like that's going to be really hard and then the idea just doesn't leave you so you have to at some point go all right I'm going to do this and the other thing is, I wonder subconsciously sometimes if my, my ideas come from things that do challenge me. So this most recent show being Reflections, when I was painting that hand show, uh, one of the objects that one of the hands was holding was this reflective uh, cat, uh, one of those lucky cat things. And I think that I found that reflection quite challenging to paint. And then of course my brain subconsciously decided that the next show, which is the most recent one, needed to be all reflections. And then um, the new show is actually all quite intense colours that are hard to recreate in oils.